Oh, darling. Hello, darling. How are you, darling? Come on in, darling. I don't bite. Unless, of course, you're into that type of thing. <laughs> you dog, you. I do want to thank you all for being here this afternoon. I know you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, darling. I don't take that for granted, darling. Come on in, the goddess gang. We have quite a doozy of a show for you all today. Please like the video on your way in and please subscribe to the channel. Okay. Don't be coming up in here not liking no videos and not subscribing. It's disrespectful. Okay. Go ahead and press that like button. Take you two seconds. Take you two seconds out your day. Okay. Go ahead and get that like button pressed for a sister. Thank you, darling. Now, we're going to touch on, it's going to be kind of a multi-subject video because I, for lack of better words, feel disgusted with the actions of the Black sisterhood, okay? Um, it took me a while to catch on to the truth behind the black sisterhood and I officially have caught on and I get it now. Okay. And this is going to speak very highly to why as women, you have got to find your like minded tribe and just stay there. Okay. When we speak about our blackness, we let it be known that being pro black is not holding hands. Kumbaya. And being ha ha ki ki with all black people. No, that's not it. It's healthy black people who want to put us first. That is your tribe. The sisterhood is the same thing. The idea that we are sisters because we are both black women is a false concept. Okay. And there is a divide that is going to have to go on here in black sisterhood. And it has gotten so extreme to where now it is literally a matter of life and death. Yeah. Black women who are proactive and solution oriented, who don't mind discipline and sacrificing are going to have to separate themselves from the black women who their goal is to just complain, okay? I'm not into the complaining thing. I don't like it. You you sit in there and you complain and then what? I like to have solutions. I like to put my best foot forward, okay? If this is what we want, what needs to be done to get there? This is a big part of your femininity. I know a lot of people discuss cooperation when we talk about femininity and your first thought is that it's about cooperating with a man and while that may be a part of it please don't ever forget about us cooperating with each other as women let's not forget cooperating with your damn self self-sabotage self-sabotage happens when someone says, this might be what I want, but I don't have enough self-love, self-confidence to get it. So I am going to take every action I possibly can to hinder from getting what I think I want and what I say I want, but I don't really want it. So I'm going to go out my way to make sure I can't get it. The Black sisterhood as a collective is nothing but self-sabotage. Period. Okay. I had one of my mentees. Y'all know I have several hundred women that I personally mentor one-on-one, -on -one, mostly younger girls, because sadly, a lot of young girls do not have any black women with any kind of wisdom or genuine care for them. The sisters who are like, mm, I want to do better. Okay. I, I don't look at our men as useless and conquered. I want one. Uh, I don't want to be big and out of shape. I want to look good. I don't want to fight the system. 
Black women will be used as pawns to fight in every system. From a political system to our system in womanhood. So I have to literally one-on-one -on -one mentor ladies who, again, mostly younger girls who are like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but all the women in my life, you know, can't really trust their advice. If I was honest with them and told them my goals, they will discourage me. So healthy minded sisters, we have to extend ourselves out for you. OK. So I offer personal one on one mentoring with my sisters. And I'm not that mentor you're going to come to and I'm going to sit there and pat you on the ass and tell you you did no wrong and you perfect. Don't come to me unless you want the truth. Because when you book your session with me, my goal is to do what? A solution. Don't come to me. If you want me to just tell you that you're right and they're wrong. No. When my girls come to me and they say, Six, your session helped me change my life, has gotten me for the better. This is why I keep going. And the more that I observe the sisterhood as a whole, the more I see why this is extremely important. There are literally other black women out here that are sending other sisters straight to hell. Discouraging you from doing your best because they are too lazy and lack discipline to do their best. And they don't want you to surpass them in the marketplace. So their solution is let me keep you small. Let me keep you complaining with us let me, let's let's keep you over here not looking at solutions one of my mentees hit me up last week and she said big sister this is also real quick this is also why i have my patreon my patreon i am not busting heads ten dollars a month 25 if you want to be involved in the meetups and get a copy of the book and all those things when I, when I have my sessions, my Patreon, I'm not here to bust you over the head financially. I'm here for some reciprocity where if I'm giving to you, you give to me. But I ain't here to make a check off y'all, bust y'all over the head. I'm here because I genuinely want to help because what I see us doing, it makes me sad. When all I see is a bunch of black women with these bad attitudes, bad bodies, bad words. I, I'm over it. And the sisterhood cannot come together for anything except for attacking other black women who offer you solutions. That's the only time the black sisterhood suddenly comes together when they collectively don't want to put in the work and they want other black women who are saying, hey, maybe we need to put in this work. And when they want to shut you up, that's the one time they come together and hold hands and want to be united. And it's whack. And it's getting called out today. One of my mentees texted me. She said, big sister, why is it so hard for me to find friends? Okay. And I received a lot of criticism when I told sisters, forget the whole friend thing. Forget the friend thing. A lot of women you see, and they're surrounded by a bunch of black women talking about their friends. Honey, they telling their business, eyeballing their man, sleeping with their man. Talk about them like a dog behind their back. No, I told y'all I got four friends. Okay. Four friends. We've been through a lot. I got their back. They got mine. Honey, that, that's it. You'll never see me around a whole bunch of women. You'll never catch me dead at a women's empowerment brunch, women's conference. Never in a million years will you ever see me in any one of those environments. Okay. I want you all to understand separating yourself from the black sisterhood is going to be mandatory if you want to have any kind of fulfillment in your life because they are leading you down a path of miserable, fat, lazy, non-disciplined, complaining. And it's, honey, if that's where y'all want to go, please go. But we're not claiming that over our lives here. We're not here to fight the system. We're here to follow it. Okay. We are some rule following. I saw this girl on TikTok talk about where are the girls who are goodies, not the baddies, the goodies. We don't want to fight the system. It's what we need to do. It's what we're going to do. Okay. I don't have the time. And so the young sister said, you know, big sister, why is it so hard to find friends? And I think she was looking, you know, because I'll periodically check in with my mentees or they'll hit me up. They'll update me on something. 
So she kind of hit me up out the blue. was like, sis, what's the tea? Why is this so hard? I said, I don't know what deep explanation you all are looking for, little sister. But the reality is most of them, they ain't ish. Because they ain't ish, honey. They're manipulative, two-faced, envious. A lot of black women have a lot of trauma. And you're not allowed to tell them that they have it. Because the minute you tell them that you ain't shit in any kind of way, it's, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're shaming us. You're a pick me. You're a mammy. You're a black male worshiper. Whatever. Whatever. And low key, y'all really want to be friends. Low key, y'all, y'all be doing so much on my name. But low key, sis, you would be so happy if I was like, you want to go to lunch and go shopping? You'd be right there. Y'all worse than the man. They got a crush on you and know they have no chance. So they drag you through the mud and roll their eyes at you. I realize you women do the same thing. You'll see another sister and you actually like what she's doing. You want to come to the gym with me. You want to come get your hair done with me. You want to come get you. You want to know where I got that dress. You want to know. But when I don't acknowledge you, now you want to bash me. Y'all worse than the man. Reason number 3,562 why I don't let y'all come on here and complain and play the victim. Reason number 3,582 why I got my foot on every woman that looked like me neck. Because see what y'all, you give y'all an inch, y'all take a mile. You cannot give black women any space. I got to keep my foot dead on y'all neck tight. Because any inch of wiggle room you have, y'all will manipulate your way and take advantage. I, I see through and I know why y'all don't like me. That's why you don't. Because you cannot bullshit me. I know and I see through it all. Woman to woman. Okay. I know you want to be friends. What you want to go to lunch, sis? You want to go get pedicures? Yeah, I know. What you want to go out? Yeah. You will be getting dressed so fast, girl. You will be so ready to go. I know. I know you're tight. It's all right. I know you need friends. You want to have a friend. I know, sis. You want some attention. It'd be so ironic. It'd be chicks copy my makeup style, hairstyle, clothing style, talking style, and then want to bash me. Sis, stop. You want to be friends. Come on. Come join my Patreon. You probably already did under a fake name to be nosy, sis. I know you in there looking at my makeup tips. You know you like the Patreon. You know you have fun of that Patreon, sis. Mm-hmm. I know. You know, just know I see you, ho. Okay, and I will continue to ignore you all and I will continue to be great and have y'all over there mad. Now, keep watching me work, boo boo. <laughs> all right. Now. We are going to look at two things. We are going to look at a video of Lori Harvey speaking on how she went about losing a quick 15 pounds. So we're going to look at a video of a black woman speaking on accountability in fitness. And then I'm going to show you a video of another black woman who says that losing weight is being fat phobic. Okay. So first we're going to look at the video that describes, I would say, 85% of the black sisterhood. This first video sums up the black sisterhood. And so when I tell you all, you don't need friends. I don't tell you that from some bitter place. I don't tell you that from some place of anger. I give you that advice from place of genuine concern, because the way these women are moving nowadays, God bless you. If you are seeking their acceptance. And let me tell you what the black sisterhood does and why I tell you all to keep free from it and do not gain a dependency on it. Learn how to stand on your own two feet as your own woman, as the queen of your own family. The minute the sisterhood sees you depend on it, the minute the sisterhood puts you on that pedestal, they put you there to have control of you being there to bring you down whenever they so choose. When you're looking for backup to condone your BS, the sisterhood is ideal <laughs> because no one, and I repeat, there is no one on this planet that does a better job at making up stuff to condone a group of women's BS as black women. It is astonishing. Boy, y'all will find a way 
to condone single motherhood, baby deletions, being big. I've never seen anything like it. It's borderline genius. Okay. So the sisterhood will come behind you and give you a false sense of security of, oh, we got your back. Oh, you want to delete your baby? We're going to support that idea. It's your body, sis. Oh, you want to be big? You don't have to have, y'all made up a term called respectability politics. Women literally made it into a weapon of what they should be embracing as feminine women, which means going with the flow, going with the system. If this is how it's going, this is just how it's going. We going with it. And we're going to go that way the best way we can. Y'all made up a term talk about, I don't have the a desire to sit and be have a respectability and desirability. Excuse me? Boy, y'all are creative, to say the least, okay? So it's all fun. When you have some BS, you want condoning. When you want someone to rally behind it, oh, the sisterhood is there for you. But the same way the sisterhood will rally together to condone BS is the same sisterhood that will come together. If you ever step outside their rules, if they have decided being big is okay, if not, you're fat phobic, baby deletions are okay, baby mamas are okay, being delusional is okay. If they have decided that this is what we're doing. And you step out of that in any capacity, the same way they rally together to support you in your BS will be the same way they will come together to tear you down. The only way to avoid this is to not become dependent on it in general. And that also come with problems. Because the minute you're a sister that is like, I don't, I could care less if y'all like me. I could care less if y'all want to hang out with me, be my friend. I don't care. Half of y'all be fake friends. Y'all be fake friends for two months on YouTube, then fall out. Y'all ain't even real friends amongst each other. Y'all think we're supposed to want a piece of that? Uh, I'm good. So then when you're a black woman who's like, I'm going to say what needs to be said and do what I need to do. They don't know how to react when you don't give a damn about the sisterhood. Fuck the sisterhood. I could give a damn. Then guess what? They're powerless then. Now they don't know what to do, but make dumbass videos. Reaching. To hell with the sisterhood. I'm about to show you all what the sisterhood looked like. This is the sisterhood personified. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now, y'all, please get ready because what I'm about to show you, it, it might kill some of your brain cells. I'm going to warn you all right now. Your brain cells may deteriorate when you watch this video. So, and before I play this video, let, let me just say this real quick. Because I know the big girls are ready to come for me in the comments. You being big don't affect me. Okay? Big girls did not make fun of me growing up. No, I do not wish I was big. Let me, let me go with other excuses. No, a big girl did not steal my man, for sure. No, I'm not jealous of big girls. Let me think of what else y'all excuse y'all have. Y'all will find any excuse to try to shame someone for speaking about this instead of the idea of maybe just as a black woman, we should be more concerned with how we look as a collective. And when most of us look like we haven't really put any discipline and effort into our looks, society will treat us the same way. So many black women have said, forget what society think about us, AKA forget ever having to lose weight or try. Black women have decided that they're not going to care about whether society and how society looks at them. They said they don't care. Which any woman that says that is a lie. So when black women say we don't care about what society think about us, aka, I don't want to have to do any work. So shut the fuck up, bitch. Yeah, I know. I know how to translate what y'all say. Okay? So now I really hate to kill y'all brain cells, but unfortunately I'm going to have to, you know, it's perfectly okay for people, women who are thin and slim, big girls can talk to us any kind of way. The reason, what, what do y'all want? I see y'all leave comments on my page. Like, why are you as a slim woman commenting on women's weight? Because clearly this means I know how to keep weight off. 
What do you want a fat girl to tell you about how to be thin? I don't understand. There's no winning with y'all. Why are you thin talking about fat girls? Baby, I'm 32 years old. Most women by my age, when I look at women I went to high school with, majority of them are fat and out of shape. If I at 32 am able to still have the body of a 22 year old, why would you not want to hear what I got to say? If Lori Harvey looked damn good, why would you not want to hear what she got to say? Y'all so worried about looking for ways to be mad. You are cutting off your nose to spite your own face. Yes, the thin in shape girl should be telling you how to be in shape. That makes no sense. Look how y'all just look for a way to be miserable and complain. I cannot stand it. So big women are able to talk to skinny girls any kind of way. Y'all call us all kind of skinny bees. Y'all call us all kind of we need to eat. And that's okay. We supposed to take that and laugh. Oh, it's funny. But then when we speak on big girls, all of a sudden it's we fat phobic, we shaming. No, if you could speak on us, we finna speak on your ass too, period. Oh, y'all need to eat. Uh, some girls say, oh, I can see the bones in your neck. Honey, it's called a decollete. You're supposed to be able to see this. This is how it was supposed to go. You fat neck ass bitch. You just, when everybody fat around you, fat become normal. And when something is a healthy weight, when you see bones, you're supposed to see, y'all think you need to eat. No, you need to stop eating. I'm tired of this. Let's continue. I, I don't got to watch my mouth. I don't got to say nothing nicely. I'm, I need to say what need to be said. I don't have time for this. Because y'all damn sure don't watch how you speak to us. So I ain't going to sit here and tiptoe about how we speak to y'all. Because y'all talk about skinny girls any kind of way. Y'all do not care. Can't dish it. Don't you can't take it, don't dish it. Now, y'all listen to this. Oh, hold on. Wait, I think the volume is not going to play. I'm gonna play the volume from my phone. Y'all, the amount of brain cells that y'all gonna uh, this girl in this video, one of the Patreoners sent this to me, and I'm not gonna lie, when she first sent it to me, I thought this girl was trolling, I thought this was fake. I was like, oh, this got to be a joke. I had to really look at it and then read the comments to realize, oh, no, Shardy is dead ass serious. And I said, see, this right here is the perfect example of why black sisterhood is some BS. Because this is what it's about. It's about lulling you to sleep. It's about lulling you to sleep to condone your BS to not have to do anything. Let me get this pulled up. I, Instagram, Instagram on the desktop is the worst thing ever. Okay. Just want to put that out there. It's the worst. All right. I don't know why I don't have something set up for the sound. But, you know, like I was saying, every time we speak on this, it's why are you speaking on this? You're not fat. So let me get this straight. So a fat girl is supposed to speak to you on how to not be fat. All right. <laughs> okay. You know, I, hey, you like it. I love it. I ain't finna sit here. I'll get with you. Okay. So here it goes. Let me share this again. Um, let me see. Share. All right. I'm going to play it on here and I'm going to play the video on my phone so y'all can hear this sick delusion we come up sometime soon just because of the video and the topics i cover but let's break this one down so intentional weight loss so you purposely saying i want to lose 20 pounds is fat phobic and you might be like what oh my goodness i'm not trying to be fat phobic but you are you're being fat phobic to yourself why do you want to lose 20 pounds? It's probably to fit into something smaller. It's probably so people treat you better. It's probably for all the reasons that fat folks are shamed simply for being fat. So by continuing to perpetuate that, right, seeking intentional weight loss, we are contributing to our fat phobic society. So that's why intentional weight loss is fat phobic. Let me know if you want to know more. No, we don't want to know more. 
We actually wish we could unsee and unhear that. In no way, shape, or form do we want we do we want that. Y'all, I'm going to let y'all listen to this one more time because I, I need this to really, I need you all to hang on to every word she's saying. Because this is the black sisterhood. Keeping you stuck and lulling you to sleep in the highest, deepest levels of mediocrity. Keeping you comfortable being mediocre. I'm gonna let y'all listen to this one more time. You need to listen to it again. So I figured that this question would probably come up sometime soon just because of the video and the topics that I cover. But let's break this one down. So intentional weight loss. So you purposely saying, I want to lose 20 pounds is fat phobic. And you might be like, what? Oh my goodness. I'm not trying to be fat phobic, but you are. You're being fat phobic to yourself. Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? It's probably to fit into something smaller. It's probably so people treat you better. It's probably for all the reasons that fat folks are shamed simply for being fat. So by continuing to perpetuate that, right, seeking intentional weight loss, we are contributing to our fat phobic society. So that's my intentional weight loss. At this point, I, I just hate it here. At this point, I hate it here. <laughs> Someone says she needs to delete that and leave social media. To say the least. Okay, to say the least. What up to my good sis, Danica? Thank you so much for the super chat. Y'all, please check out Danica Dope Discussions channel. It is just like it says in its name, dope. She's talking about girl, just lose weight and stop this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god thank you for the super chat mandisa mandisa <laughs> i'm trying to find the comment where is it i can't find the comment but mandisa says she sounds delusional and lonely girl to say the least i mean if, if we really if we put it nicely um but that's the black sisterhood. See, the black hit sisterhood, the job of that is to say, oh, it's okay. Those mean old people want to tell you that you're big and want to tell you that you need to lose weight. Come here. They're just fat phobic. You just want to lose weight to fit into something smaller. And so society will treat you better. No, you don't need to do that. Well, then what is the solution, ma'am? Well, then what is your solution? The purpose of the Black Sisterhood is to tell you what you don't need to do and what you don't have to do. But they don't tell you, well, what do we need to do? You're saying we don't need to lose weight. We don't need to care about what anyone thinks about us. Well, what do we need to do? Y'all will sit there and give us a list of what we don't have to do. What do we need to do? Thank you so much for the super chat, Brianna. She says, losing weight was the best thing I could have done for myself, period. And sis, you look damn good, period, okay? So now, that is what black women want to hear. Let me show y'all this, hold on. Y'all remember when I, man, listen. Uh, y'all remember when I was telling y'all how black women just want to go to brunch? How black women just want to go to brunch, fat, twerking, and eating. Y'all, let me show y'all this I found. Where is it? Is this it? No. Hold on. I, I'm trying to show y'all what I found. Look at this. Now, this is... um. These people, shout out to them. They from back home in Orlando. And they have a brunch that they do out there. And I was cracking up laughing to myself when I saw one of their promo videos for their brunch. Let me make sure, let me, I'm going to mute my camera real quick because I want to make sure that the music. Oh, real quick. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. 
Make sure she doesn't say anything. She just sending me a little love. Thank you, sis. Now I saw. Now y'all laughed at me when I said, "Why every time I see brunches, why do all I see is big girls dancing with chicken and waffles?" Y'all, let me show y'all this. This is the video. Uh-uh. Aisha says, we just want our space back on airplane, sis. Girl, stop. Now, you know what? Stop it. I think they got to buy two seats, though. Now, child, y'all remember when I told y'all, um, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, Wiggly Will says, anyone who supports healthy black relationships with accountability on both sides, I will gladly support them. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So y'all laughed at me when I said all black women want to do is be big, eat chicken and waffles and dance and twerk at brunch. And y'all was like, ha, 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 ha. But I'm dead serious. So I seen this promo video. Shout out to the O. Shout out to the Coming to America brunch. But I'm sorry. I was screaming, crying, looking at this promo video for this brunch. Because y'all try to count how many big girls you see. And then count how many big girls you see twerking. This is, y'all be thinking I'd be saying something to be me. It's just facts. The facts are not me. <laughs> All I see, it is literally one, two, three, four. Look at the one back there. Five, six, seven. She's, she's, she's not that big. Eight, nine. Y'all will call that thick, that it's not thick. Look at them back there. Big 10, 11. Whoo! There's one small one there. 13, 14, 15. There's a small one there. 17. Whoo! Oh my God. <laughs> There's one in the back. 18. Oh, 19. 20. Oh my God. I can't even, I can't keep track. But pretty much everybody. This is the black sisterhood culture. Because y'all think I'm mean and I make stuff up. It's actually sad. Brianna says it's making her sad. Like on a serious note, it really is sad. It's not even funny for real. If we're being honest, it's not funny. This means that this is how we look as a collective as black women. That's bad. We going out bad. Then say, oh, we're the most unprotected. We're the most. Yeah. And we're the most ones who don't give a damn about what society thinks. And society will be the one to protect you. So when you sit and put a spell on yourself saying respectability politics and we don't care what society wants. Well, guess what? Society won't give a damn either. Because you want to fight the program instead of getting with it. And it hurts you. Y'all can pretty much, I can guarantee you in almost any city, look at their little brunch promo videos. And all you're going to see is a bunch of humongous black women dancing. That is the sisterhood. Come dance with us eating chicken and waffles at brunch. I saw a video the other day of a sister with her husband and talk about when she mad because you ate the last Krispy Kreme donut and she was big mad because he ate the donut. Why are you eating a Krispy Kreme donut? How are you mad at your in-shape husband because he ate the Krispy Kreme donut, ma'am? You don't need to eat that donut. You need to be losing weight. So now we're going to talk about this video with Lori Harvey because there's a lot to unpack here. So many women will come forward and will say, how do I lose weight? How do I lose weight? How do I lose weight? What if I told you that the best way to handle your weight is to not allow yourself to get big in the first place. Oh, you want to know what I see that literally makes me want to cry? I'm going to tell you, when I see this, this makes me want to break down in tears. It, it literally just breaks my heart. And that is when I see a big woman with daughters, and her daughters are big too. I'm talking about kids. I'm talking about elementary school, middle school. She big and her kids big too. Talk about 
God didn't make no mistakes on you. This is how God made you. Talking about, oh, yeah, my daughter, she thick. Then you see the daughter, and the daughter is huge. Because your mama said and told you you're thick and you're big boned. What's the next thing you hear? We can't all be skinny. Y'all ain't never not once heard me say that we all need to be skinny. I said a healthy weight. I have never, ever sat here and said black women need to be skinny. Healthy weight means just that. Healthy weight according to the woman. But when y'all always look for a way to be dramatic, six of God has said we need to all be skinny. We're not going to all be skinny. No one said that, ma'am. Literally nobody. So we have these discussions about how do I lose weight? How do I lose weight? Ma'am, let's focus on the real thing here. Not getting big in the first place. The minute you start to see a little extra pop up, that's the time to take immediate action and get it under control. You don't wait until you're 100, 150, 200 pounds overweight to then suddenly say, how do I lose weight? You need to prevent it. That's step one. You see a woman with elementary school daughters, she big and her daughters are big. You are setting your daughter up to fail. You're setting your daughter up to have to be a provider for the rest of her life. You're setting your daughter up to be used and abused by men for some head and then thrown away and not be taken out in public and be played, you are setting your daughters up to fail like you because you failed. So now you cannot stand to see your daughter succeed. So you will sit and allow your daughter to be big like you. But that's a video for another day where we talk about the jealousy between black women and their daughters. Oh, that's a conversation y'all will definitely hate me for if we speak on that. Y'all hate on your own daughters so bad that you make sure that you ruin them before they even have a fucking chance. Talk about God love her this way. Fuck you. You're full of shit, period. Cursing them little girls like that. You know them niggas in high school going to think about her? She big. She big in elementary school, middle school, high school. It's going to be boys in high school telling her she's pretty. To suck their dick behind the gym and keep it moving. That's what you're setting your daughter up for. Having her big from a child. Do you know how hard it is for women who have been big from kindergarten to now be adults trying to lose weight? You're putting your daughters in a prison. Telling your daughters, don't get up till you eat all your food. When your daughters want to be in shape, telling them, "Uh uh-uh, you getting too skinny. Stop hating on your kids. Out of here, she's God made her this way. She she big boned. You setting your own daughters up. How you hate on your own blood? You manipulative ass bitch. And oh, we ain't supposed to call you out on it though, right? Like, we supposed to act like we don't see big girls where their daughters are big as hell too. Little girls, four or five years old, butterball. They don't even know any better, and we supposed to act like we don't see that. Mama talk about, well, they got to eat. They got to exercise. They don't have to eat McDonald's and processed food. If your daughter, I swear to God, if you're watching this and you're a big woman and your daughter big right now, get up and sign her up for dance class, soccer, basketball, something. Do not keep feeding your child BS food and then you're not setting them up to be in any activity. If she big all through elementary school, middle school, high school, majority of the time she will be big the rest of her life. And it will be your fault as a mother. But you don't want your daughter to be fit and looking good because then you know the men will want her and not you. That's what it really come down to. Oh, man, don't get me started on that one. Don't get me started on that because I'm going to go slap off. Y'all, y'all will, y'all will pass out if I really take it there. I tried to keep it cool in this video. It's not going to work. I'm annoyed. So this probably won't be monetized. So y'all send your girl some love. Okay. Cash app is in the bio. Send me some love. I already know I fucked up the monetization. Oh, well, I said what I said. I'm very passionate about this subject. 
because I am very thankful that I had a mother who set me up from a child to not be obese. I'm very grateful. And as I get older, the more I realize why I'm so grateful to have the type of mom I did. I come from a long line of women who are tall, slim. Overeating has never been a thing in my family. My family has never, growing up, it was never, we about to go out to eat. I never saw my mom, my grandma, going to brunch every weekend twerking. I never saw them drink. I never saw them overeat. I only saw my grandma, she would make healthy food from scratch. You want to check my bloodline, go on my community tab right now, look at my mom and my grandmother. We all built the same. And y'all will say, oh, it's your genetics. It's also a genetic mindset about food. I was raised in a family where food was not the center of our lives. Our life did not revolve around food. It was never, oh, we got to go eat. I never seen my grandma making fried chicken. And it was just, that was never a thing. My mom never told me, you can't leave the table unless you eat all your food. My mom would say, when you feel content, you stop eating, period. And it, it wasn't until an adult where I see so many women struggle with food where I realized, why do I just not have the same complex? And I realized it's a generational, healthy men mental relationship with food. That's what it really is. I'm going to shout y'all out on a cash app. Thank you, Blessed and Natural. Thank you, Sierra. I appreciate you. All right. So let's talk about this. With, let's talk about what Lori Harvey said, because we, we have a problem here. Thank you, Side Butterfly. She just sent some love. No message. Now... Lori speaks in this video about how when she got with Michael B. Jordan, let's start there. Let's start there. How many women are in love with Michael B. Jordan? Which, let me give my personal opinion. I find him to be extremely overhyped. I do not find him good looking or attractive or any of that. I don't know what y'all see in him. Hey, you like it, I love it. Me personally, I don't look at him that way, but... Apparently, a lot of women do. So if a lot of women, you know, like Michael B. Jordan, his look, his money, his social status, if this is his woman, this is indicator number one of what he likes. So if you like men like him and this is the woman that he's with, that should be number one solution on, OK, if this is the kind of men y'all want, y'all want wealthy, good looking men. This is exhibit A on what they tend to go for, right? You would think that would be the common sense on how it would work. Thank you so much for the super chat, Scorpio Sun. Says Six is in here telling the whole damn truth, and that's on Mary and all her lambs whose fleece was white as snow. You hear me? You know, so the fact that they're taking issue, these women, this is the black sisterhood, these women went to Lori Harvey. Here's Lori Harvey minding her own business, being great. They go to Lori and say, sis, drop the workout routine. Oh, snap, y'all. My boy Anton just dropped one on me. My boy Anton just dropped one on me, y'all. Anton came through with the blue boy. Time. So now I got to put on my rich bitch glasses. All right. So y'all blame Anton because now my attitude is about to really change. Okay. Now I got to have my rich bitch attitude and y'all can blame Anton. Okay. <laughs> because y'all already know what happens when that red box come up. Okay. I get real bougie. <laughs> y'all all become poor. All y'all are poor <laughs> and I'm rich. Okay. So I apologize, but Six has left the building. Madam Rich Bitch is here. Blame Anton. And, you know, that's just that. Okay. So I'm sorry, but don't talk to me. Call my manager. All right. Um, no autographs. Peasants. Please back away. And yeah, that's just where we are for the rest of the stream. I'm sorry. You know, this is just what it is. 
you know, anyway, um, so as I was saying, as I was saying, y'all better hope I don't go get a wine class for my alpha juice. Y'all better hope I don't. Okay. Because I'm this close to go getting a wine glass for it. All right. So y'all just stay tuned. I can't make no promises. I just might, but I'm going to, I'm going to try my best. Okay. I don't know. It, 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 you know, a sister, I got to do what I can do. All right. I'm only human. So Lori Harvey is clearly the type of woman that men like Michael B. Jordan like. If you ask majority of black women, they say they want wealthy, good looking men. OK, so we see a, the woman of a wealthy, wealthy, good looking man speaking on how she got her body. OK, now let's let's when I, let's go back to what we were just speaking about when we said let's stop focusing so much on how do we lose weight. And let's start focusing more on how do we prevent extreme weight gain, okay? The first way that you are going to prevent extreme weight gain is by what you are putting into your body. You have to be consuming fresh fruits and vegetables. We have companies like Alpha Juice Company who has made it so that you have no room for excuses anymore. Y'all bragging about how you got degrees, good jobs. Use some of the money for that from that good job to invest in your health. I understand. The main complaint we see is we ain't got time. Lori Harvey is able to look like that because her full-time job is just to look good and this, that, and the third. Fine. You don't have time, Alpha Juice Company does, honey, okay? They have the time. And they'll go ahead and they will juice some fresh fruits and vegetables, organic, fresh press right for you, deliver it to your door, cold. They even give you a straw. They even give me a discount code for you to get $5 off, my code 6GOD, to save you some money. You have, you have no excuse. All you got to do, take out the fridge, open it, shake it, straw, drink. That's it, okay? So start there. Let's start there with what we eat. Okay. Alpha Juice Company information is in the chat, the description box, all that. Now, Lori says, let me tell y'all now, y'all people, the sisterhood can lie to you all they want and say this is not a thing, but prominent Wealthy men with social status are not in any way, shape, or form being with a big girl, period. Not even a thick girl. Not even BBL type girls. None of that. Okay? It's not happening. No BBL girls. No thick girls. It's just not happening. Period. Okay? And we're not talking about basketball players. We're not talking about rappers. We're not. Okay? But they're they're not doing it. So, and they... Also, I want to make this clear. Prominent men with wealth and resources, honey, they don't need your good credit. They don't need you as a sign if I can't other. They don't need you as a divine co-signer. They don't need your half of the bill. They don't need it. So guess what? They have no problem letting you know, hey, baby, uh, you gaining a few pounds. Go ahead and take care of that. Tighten that up a little bit. I want to see less body fat here, a little more there. Da, da, da. They'll tell you. See, a lot of big girls are with men that need them financially. So he cannot be honest with you and say, please stop going to brunch every weekend, twerking and eating chicken and fucking waffles with unlimited mimosas, dancing happy as hell eating. They can't tell you that because you the one with the good credit. This house is in your name. His car is in your name. You paying them bills. You giving him money to start his business. So he does, he has lost his leverage to be able to tell you, baby, this is not it. You getting kind of big. So when Lori saw that she was gaining a few pounds. Y'all know how it be. You get into a relationship. You start getting real happy. You having lots of intercourse. Y'all know good D make you thick. Y'all know 
y'all start, you get in a relationship, you know, and start thanking that thing your way consistently, we know that thickness, that good D thickness is a thing. And it's cute in a relationship in the beginning. Okay? A few little good D pounds, cute, right? And your girls will tell you, girl, I know you getting so girl, you getting thick. You like, yeah, I've been hunching. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You notice that? Yep. <laughs> I've been doing it. <laughs> yes, I have. They like, girl, are you putting on a little song song? You be like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the good brother Andre Hatchet. Y'all, please check out Andre's channel. That is the money man. He going to show you how to get to the bag, show you how to get the money. Y'all, that is the coolest brother I ever seen. Y'all, please check out Mr. Hatchet. You know, they call it happy weight, a.k.a. hunching weight. You know, you first get with them, especially if you with a little bit for a while before that. You go to getting that good deal on the regular, and you be like, yeah, you know, I've been hunching, okay? That's why you see the little few pounds, and it's cute at first, right? It's kind of cute. All right, cute. <laughs> but then at some point, you don't want it to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And before you know, you're fat as hell. And it, it happens like this. It takes forever to lose weight. And it takes like this to gain it. It's the same with credit. It takes forever to get your credit good. And then one mistake. And it, it tanks. It just falls. This is how your body credit is. Losing weight is a process. It takes time consistency, a lot of dedication. Gaining it, you're a cheeseburger away. So the minute you start seeing a little extra cheeky nugget starting to, you know, starting to, then that's when it's time to go ahead and make it work. So Lori was like, whoa, whoa, I don't got in this little relationship, okay? I began a little good deed. I'm noticing a little weight gain. She couldn't fit in her clothes. So this is what Lori had to say. Y'all asked her what she did. She answered you. Lori did not just wake up and volunteer this information. Okay. Y'all asked her and she told you. Okay. This is what she had to say. And let me guess. Let me guess the sound is not going to. Let me get my sound ready on here. Oh, no, my phone about to die. I'm going down. Okay, let me see if I can get the volume to play. And of course not. Okay, let me get my charger. And I'm going to charge my phone. I have been having phone struggles all day. Okay. All day I've been having phone struggles. So what I'm going to do is plug the phone in. And then I will, how do I expand this? Plug the phone in so that way. Y'all can uh oh wait, I think I might have figured out. Oh, I think I might have figured out how to do this. Wait a second. Bye, Joe. I think I've got it. Oh, I think I figured it out. Oh snap, look at me. Okay, I figured it out. All right, guys. So now I can show you. All right. Really consistent last year. And when I was trying to drop weight, I was working out like five, six times a week. And I would even do like for the first month and a half, I think I did two a days. So what I would, can we would do was I was in a calorie deficit. I think I maybe was consuming like 1,200 calories in a day max. And I wasn't on like a specific 
eating regimen. I just was trying to do like meat and veggies and like minimal carbs. And then I had this sprint interval circuit that I would do. So I would do Pilates in the morning and then I would leave there and I would sometimes directly go to the gym and hop on the treadmill Hmm. for 30 minutes. And it's a specific sprint interval. So when Mike and I got together, I gained like 15 pounds of relationship weight and it was horrible. None of my clothes fit. It was just not okay. So I've been consistently doing Pilates for like the last year. I've done it for a few years, but I've been really consistent last year. And when I was trying to drop weight, I was working out like five, six times a week. And I would even do like for the first month and a half, I think I did two a days. So what I would do was I was in a calorie deficit. I think I maybe was consuming like 1200 calories in a day max. And I wasn't on like a specific eating regimen. I just was trying to do like meat and veggies and like minimal carbs. And then I had this sprint interval circuit that I would do. So I would do Pilates in the morning and then I would leave there and I would sometimes directly go to the gym and hop on the treadmill for 30 minutes. And it's a specific sprint interval. Work. So when Mike and I got okay. together, I gained like so 15 pounds of relation. Here, now here are the comments. Now, this is this is the irony to me, all right? The irony for me is this. Black women do not collectively come forward and say, you know what? This obesity crisis, because that's exactly what it is. Black women are experiencing an obesity crisis, okay? No matter what, which way you try to flip it, it is an obesity crisis. I'm blind. I got to put on my glasses because I can't see. I'm going to keep real with y'all. Did y'all know y'all big sister is legally blind? Did y'all know that? I get it from my dad. We are some blind MFs, okay? <laughs> we are. I'm just, I ain't going to hold you. Y'all should see how blind my daddy is. Thank you for the super chat. Ron says, Lori has a small stature, so going 15 pounds on a small frame is like gaining 30. Facts, okay? Because your height makes a big difference, okay? I tell you all, right now, I am I am uh, six foot tall. And I am 170 pounds. I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to take a pause right there for y'all to let that digest. I am, I weigh 170 pounds. This is why I don't tell women you need to be skinny. I say you need to be a healthy weight. Because 170 pounds looks good on me. I'm going to show you guys my stature. I know I'm in here sitting down and y'all can't really see me. Let me pull up my Instagram so y'all can understand how when you're taller like me, I can sit here and I can weigh 170 pounds and it's fine. Oh, I was cute on here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was cute here. Wait a minute, y'all looking good, okay? So that's why I hate when y'all lie on me and be like, oh, six, and we need to all be skinny. How I told y'all to be skinny, and I weigh 170 pounds, but y'all got to understand, I'm a stallion, okay? Y'all got to understand, I'm a stallion. These legs, my legs probably is where all the weight is, all right? And it goes to show how muscle weighs differently in your body as well. It's not about the number. It's about the look. Someone said I look 125 pounds. Right. You would never look at me and think I weighed over 120, 130, maybe 140 max. But I weigh 170 pounds. Might be more than that. But I want you all to look at my stature. Okay, this is 170 pounds, but you see, look at my legs. The legs is where it's at. Look at the booty. The booty is where it is. Woo, girl, you great look good, god damn. Hey, boo. Hey, girl, damn, what's your name? I ain't gonna hold you. Woo, that's a stallion. Woo. Oh, girl, you 
look good. I go hold you. <laughs> Let me stop trolling. Let me stop trolling. I troll like that just for the people who be like, oh, six is so, she is so arrogant and she is so obsessed with herself. <laughs> Bitch, I look damn good. You damn right. <laughs> I look good. You don't see some of that every day. Oh my gosh. They, she says we should worship her. She, she thinks she's, she's overly confident. She and me, boy, you call it what you want. Bitch, I look damn good. <laughs> Woo. I'm sorry. Boy, you got to just be mad. Prepare to be sick of me. If I don't think I'm the baddest thing walking, who will? Someone else? No. Yes, I think I'm the baddest thing. Period. It's the me for me every time. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the me for me. I'm not going to hold you. All right? You say what you want to say. Yeah, okay? Period. Got to be y'all proud. Now y'all wait for someone else. Think you the best thing smoking, baby. You need to think it, ma'am. Okay? <laughs> Let me stop trolling now because I know y'all get triggered when you see powerful, confident black women. I know you it just sends y'all. So let me stop before y'all head explode. All right. So now let's continue. But I weigh 170 pounds. So this is why y'all cannot continue to lie on me and say that, oh, six said we got to all be skinny. No. Okay. Now I'm six foot tall and 170 pounds. What if I was five foot tall? If I was five foot tall and 170 pounds, God help us all, <laughs> okay? So your height matters. Lori comes forward and says, hey, you know, I saw myself gain a few pounds. I wanted to prevent it. You cannot continue to go to women that have a body that you like. Then when they tell you how, how when she says, this is how I did it, here go the comments. Oh, I didn't even show y'all the comments. Let me show y'all the comments. The comments are going to really send y'all, honestly. Uh-oh, hold on. So now I want to also, I want to also make this clear. Okay, because a lot of women have been sold the dream that, oh my God, if, if you don't eat, you're going to just keel over. All right. A lot of women have been sold the dream that, oh my God, not eating is going to mess up your metabolism, this, that, and the third. I want to make this very clear. You do not need to eat three meals a day. Okay. You do not need to eat 3,000 calories a day. Unless you have a certain... And I'm talking about what you need to survive, okay? Now, for example, I will do 3,000 calories a day when I'm doing really heavy lifting on my legs in the gym. That's why my legs have gotten so big because I've been doing a lot of heavy weight lifting on my legs. And so since I'm doing so many heavy weights on it, I have to ingest hella calories, number one, because the legs are longer, number two, to replenish, okay? But you do not need to eat 3,000 calories a day, okay? You do not need to eat three times a day. You are not, it's not, oh, you need to eat, you're going to look sick. It's not any of that. Lori Harvey getting on TikTok saying she ate 1,200 calories a day and worked out twice a day just because she gained 15 pounds is she got the emoji like her eyes are about to pop out. Like she just gone cross-eyed the emoji. I'm glad the comments have some sense in them though. Weight loss culture is trash. So let's, di let's dissect that. Let me translate in the BS black sisterhood language, okay? Her saying, oh, weight loss culture is trash. Black, toxic black sisterhood translation. I'm gonna tell y'all the translation. <clears throat> if this stupid ass skinny bitch don't shut the fuck up, being a celebrity, sitting there talking about how she actually dieted and actually denied herself of foods down to 1,200 calories and is working out twice 
fucking day. And that's going to make us have to do the same thing if she don't shut the fuck up. There, fixed it. I translated it for you. Because Lori Harvey is what? An influencer. Y'all have no problem with influencers going to get BBL, sucking all the fat up out of them, and then sitting and saying it's okay. But boy, when y'all have a woman come forward and say, I dieted and worked out, this is when the black sisterhood will come together collectively to shame the woman, to shut her up. Because no matter how much we try to fight it, we are symbiotic as a people. No matter how much we try to fight it, what one black woman woman does can easily become a standard for what you need to do too. Lori Harvey resume speak for itself. Look who she bagged. Look who she with. So the reason why they got on Lori so bad is because if this bitch keep talking, we're not going to be able to twerk eating chicken and waffles at brunch anymore because we're trying to drown our sorrows because we're denying ourselves of our nature as women, which is to please men and is to be desired and adored. But we are on this whole entire campaign to convince ourselves that we don't need desirability or respectability. So in order to cope with that void in us as women, we need to be able to go to brunch, eat chicken and waffles, bottomless mimosas, and twerk. Yeah. Um, so let, let me let me say this. A 1200 calorie diet, if 80% of black women are big, that means 80% of you. 1,200 calories a day, you'll be just fine. 1,200 calories a day is a quick, short-term weight loss option. Do you go on a 1,200 calorie diet for forever? No, but a lot of y'all got enough fat stored to last you months, okay? A lot of y'all, I promise you, you get down to one meal a day, you will not die. We as women have got to get out of this big mama mindset where every y'all ever notice how big mama is personified. Every time you see big mama, the first thing is, oh, baby, you hungry? No, big mama. We just ate. No, big mama. We're not hungry. No, we don't need a five course meal. We just ate an hour ago. Big mama taught you that every time you lay eyes on her, you got to eat. No. Some of y'all could go months on 1,200 calories and have plenty of fat to burn for energy. Y'all act like if you go down to one meal a day, you're going to starve. Do y'all have a fear of starving? Is that a real phobia? I want to look it up. Because I truly think that black women have a fear of starvation. It is. Let me see. Hmm. I'm trying to find the exact name. Oh my God. People ask, why am I scared of being hungry? <laughs> so there is such thing as a fear of being hungry. A fear of starving. Because I truly believe black women have it. Because the minute that you mention not eating three meals a day, they start to say, oh, you're going to starve. No, you're not. You don't even need that much food. Fasting is actually very good for you. You actually can go a week without eating and be fine. You actually can go a month without eating and be fine. You don't need three meals a day. Big mama lied to y'all. Y'all actually need one meal a day with some fish and vegetables. You all have been sold a lie about your womanhood and your femininity. You've been told any of your femininity, you ain't got to do anything. You've been taught that in your femininity, it's all about you, 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 doing what you want. And that's a lie. Because a big part of your femininity is denying yourself of things, okay? A big part of your femininity is sacrifice. 
okay? But that's not what y'all want. I'm going to show y'all what y'all want instead. I'm going to show y'all a perfect, this little video clip is going to show y'all exactly what it is y'all really want. This. This is what y'all want. With your man in the background as a prop, shutting his mouth while y'all shovel dead chickens into your mouth, blowing kisses with your barbecue chicken breath. This is what y'all want. Okay. This is what this is what y'all want femininity to be. Just being huge. Stuffing more food into your, files, your face with your man in the background blowing us barbecue chicken breath kisses. Bitch, it's COVID. We don't need you blowing your stank barbecue chicken on a stick skewer breath through the screen. Bitch, we might got COVID through this video. But this is what y'all want. Sit around, eat, do whatever I want. And everybody else, shut up. This is not femininity. This is not what it's about. Okay? And then the minute anybody come forward and let y'all know, hey, this ain't it, it's a problem. All right? Y'all, honestly, on a realistic long-term scale, y'all can hit y'all a 1,500-calorie diet. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. 1,500 calories and y'all are fine, okay? You are not going to starve. You're not going to pass out. You're not going to die. You're not going to have an eating disorder. None of that, okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you something else. Hold on. Let me, let, me, let me show you this because this is the next problem. Did I save that video? I had a video. I thought I saved it. Maybe I didn't. Dang it. Well, anyway, it was a video about a sister who had went out. Oh, here it goes. I found it. See, the problem is we sit and we gather around and we gather together to shut people up about having to sacrifice, have discipline. We gather together to shut each other up about that. And then you have all these women going out of the country to get surgery. And you applaud that. So we'll sit and allow sisters to risk their life to get BBLs. But the minute, and we don't say nothing about that. But then a the minute a sister say, I dieted and exercised and worked my butt off. That's when we suddenly speak up and have a problem. Let me get this barbecue chicken breath off my screen. Blowing us these COVID barbecue, these COVID barbecue kisses. Okay. You just want to be sweet baby rays so bad. We don't want to see this. This make us sad. Poor husband in the back. Poor husband in the back. He just eating his little chicken like, why she got to make this video? Poor guy. Poor guy. Should have made a better choice in life, sir. Should have signed that prenup. Boy, I hate it. Had to be you, bro. Boy, I know. So now this is this is what happens. So I'm, I'm going to show you guys this. How can I restart this video? One second. Okay, let me go back because... I don't understand when y'all get BBLs, okay? Y'all get BBLs and you will sit and get the fat sucked out your stomach, but then your neck is still fat. Your face is still fat. You'd rather have a fat face and a fat neck than to go to the gym so you can lose the weight distributed evenly. So you will not, you will sit there and campaign with one another to shut women up about dieting and exercising when you start to put on weight. When you start to see, ooh, I'm getting a little fluffy. My clothes are starting not to fit. 
Let me go ahead. Calorie deficit, 1,200, two a days. Let me get this off. That's what a 1,200 calorie diet is for. It's not for when you're 200 pounds overweight. It's for when you have a little 10, 15 pounds you want to get rid of and you want to get rid of quickly. Y'all will speak up about that. But then when this happens, you don't want to speak up about this. Black women are going under the knife and paying the ultimate price. I literally could have died. A plastic surgeon in the Dominican Republic is accused of botching surgery so bad, some women are not making it out alive. So what's really going on in the DR? I'm Justin Carter. This is TSR Investigates. The Shave Room received several messages from women who all claim that they were former patients of Dominican Republic-based surgeon, Dr. Jose Decina. In a series of similar events, they all say that he'll do your Brazilian butt lift, he'll do your liposuction, your tummy tuck for cheap rates, but in turn, instead of leaving with the body you want, you leave with deformities, bruises, or even death. Zakaria Royal says that she spent about $8,000 for surgery back in 2020. I got um, laser lipo. Um, I got a tummy tuck. I got orange. But look at her face. I got a BBL. She says she found Dr. Jose De What about online. your cheeks? She that he was the doctor what about your neck? Her. She saw his work, liked the results, and at first, she didn't see any reports or reviews of any injuries or deaths under his care. He did have a death right before I got ready to go, and I was kind of iffy. But um, I know sometimes women do do not disclose all of their health in information. And he was stating that's what, what occurred. And I know that does happen. But she says anxiety kicked in on day of surgery. To me, it looked like like a little, um, you know, a laundry mat type thing where they have like sheets and stuff like everywhere. It was So we'll do all this, but we won't eat 1,200 calories and go to the gym. And it was a lot of people back there folding sheets and stuff and nobody spoke English. She says she Googled the word pain in Spanish so the nurses and doctors would know if she was in pain. But during surgery, I wake up. So um, there's like something right here over. Okay. When I seen how black women suddenly figured out how to come together to speak on quote unquote risks, when it comes to losing and maintaining weight, I couldn't believe it. I said, wait a minute. So when Lori come forward and say, hey, 1,200 calories, okay? 1,200 calories, two a days, y'all have a fit. But then when somebody posts a good looking BBL surgery, y'all all in the comments talk about who's your surgeon? All, and then y'all sat and said, we hope that Lori didn't lose that weight for Michael. We hope she, we hope this bitch did not lose weight for her man. She better not have. Black women will gladly get on their knees and put a dick down to their tonsils and swallow with no problem. But lose weight for a man? Absolutely not. Black women will sit and lay up and let men raw dick them. Shoot up their club, have a nigga baby after baby, gladly. But lose weight for a man? No. This is a mental illness. Thank you for the super chat, Lucky. This is a mental illness. It is self-hatred. It is backwards. It is delusional. Matter, and I'm, I'm going to, matter of fact, no, I'm not. I was going to, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't got time for that. This is a problem. What it come down to is this. We are responsible for ourselves. Okay. If you look at this sister, you know, I ain't got nothing against this sister, but Going the direction of paying all this money, going out the country, taking the risk that come with it. You really can sit and put that money towards a trainer, towards a meal prep, you know, someone who does meal prep. 
okay? Those thousands of dollars that you're putting into surgery and risking your life can go into exercise, a gym membership. Tyrone says, and then she want men 6'3 with a six pack. Yes, we see that all the time. Someone said they saw a girl on TikTok saying how to lie to the doctor to get surgery for health issues. Wow. This is the black sisterhood, y'all, keeping you stuck and stagnant. This is the black sisterhood being okay with you risking your life, but not okay with you having any level of accountability that will act as a blanket towards all black women and set a new standard in which they will have to actually sacrifice. Ladies, if you want to succeed, if you want to move better, if you want to move forward, if you want a lifestyle where you're not looking to just complain and be the victim and everything, if you want to really take power over your own womanhood, leave the black sisterhood as fast as you can. You need to move away from black sisterhoodism and move into black female tribalism. The women who want to stay big talk about they're not concerned about desirability and respectability. Let them create their own tribe full of complaining and no solutions and not getting what they want. You need to separate into your own tribe of women who are saying, yes, we want solutions. We want the relationships. We want the family. We want to look good. We want to please our men. We want our men to look at us and like what they, what they see. This is something that God put into you. If you try to fight, hold on, hold on. Because there's a word coming over me right now. It's a word coming over me. If you try to fight what God has naturally instilled in you for a reason, you will be miserable. If you try to fight what God calls you to do in any capacity, you will be miserable. You cannot ignore God. You cannot. What God calls you to do must be done. It is embedded in your psyche as a woman to get the approval of the men that look like you. As a black woman, God has instilled it in you to get the acceptance and adoration of the men that share your skin tone. You cannot fight it. This is why y'all have to have support groups and get drunk every weekend at brunch to cope with having to tell yourself that you don't care about what your men want and think, but you do. Because God designed you to be that way. And God designed you to be that way for a reason. Because you know what happens when you give your men what they want? They give you what you want. When we as a collective have come together to ensure that not only we don't give our men what we want, but attack any women who insinuate in any way, shape, or form to conform and give our men what they want, you have lost. It's not going to get you anywhere. Ladies, stop fighting it. Get out that masculine energy of trying to win and learn how to be happy. Because you may be winning, but at what expense? Are you really happy? You're probably not. You're out of breath right now. Okay? It's okay to lose the weight. You is not going to die. You is not going to starve. Okay? You're going to... I, the girls in the video, you're going to fit your clothes better. People going to treat you better. You won't have to squeeze. You'll be able to go to more places. Okay. It's okay, ladies. You don't have to die on that hill. Okay. I know you want to die on the hill, but you don't have to. And it's not too late to say, hey, we were wrong. 
Okay. Thank you for the super chat. Everything Queen Monet. She says, speaking of tribalism, are you still doing the monthly meetups for your Patreonists? I just moved to ATL and want to align myself with like-minded women. Yes, but we can't never find a date where everybody can get together. There are Patreonists all the way in the UK, Patreons in California. We only have a small number of Patreonists here. So we got to figure out like, okay, what we're going to really do? What we're going to do? Because I don't want to do a meetup and it's like three of us at the meetup. You know what I'm saying? So the ATL Patreonas, we're going to have to get a schedule that worked for everybody because I don't want to do it on a date. And then one of the Patreonas like, I got to work this day. So we're going to have to figure this out. We are going to have to get together and do a live stream in the Patreon to all, all the ATL Patreonas because you got some Patreonas in Tennessee, Florida, where they're going to come up for our meetup. So we're going to have to get together for real and figure this out, okay? But yes. Um, and you all will also be getting your book copies for the new Patreon. It's in the $25 tier. Okay? So yeah, we'll get in there and we'll talk about that, okay? So leave the black sisterhood it, it leaves you stagnant it's unhealthy it's a facade okay it's a false comfort move forward move out of there ladies we have to do better we have way more power over what we get what we can demand than we think we don't have to be reduced down to just being complaining just thank you for the super sticker simply sweet we don't have to be reduced to complaining and crying we don't okay so that Okay, that Italian sub is in your hand right now, sis. Put it down. You don't need it. You don't need it. And chicken and waffles, you had planned to go with your girls to brunch Sunday. Don't go. Don't go. If you go, get a salad. Okay, how you ate an egg sandwich for breakfast. And you're eating that Italian sub for lunch with Doritos. Okay. And now you got plans to eat that rack of lamb and mashed potatoes for dinner. Don't do it. Don't do it. I see you. I wish I could pop up on y'all every time you were overeating like this. Put it down. Can you imagine? Like every time you about to overeat, I pop up like you ate already today. Stop. And I just like go back into the darkness and back into a bush somewhere. That would be great. You know, I would do that if I could. Okay, I, I'm not going to hold y'all. Okay, thank you all for the, the cash apps. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Victor. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all all for the super chats. You all are amazing. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Join my Patreon. Do, do y'all like my makeup today, ladies? Come on, it's so cute. It's pink, okay? Join the Patreon. I do my makeup live for my YouTube videos on my Patreon. Like, y'all literally see step-by-step step of my makeup. Come on. All my hairstyle, I show you guys on my Patreon. I tell you guys, you know, where I shot, what we do. You know, we, we, we do what we do. Why are you not in the Patreon? Patreon.com slash Six of Goddess. You need a session with me, okay? You're having a hard time figuring things out. Your mama is telling you, pray about it. Jesus will fix it. The therapist is an old white lady in a white coat that cannot relate to you at all, okay? She's giving you these foo-foo answers, trying to prescribe you weird medications. Come to your big sister, okay? Come to your big sister. Get some real help. You want to figure out how you become your best self, how you look good, feel good, relationship issues, personal issues, whatever it is. Everything is confidential. What we discuss between me and you, okay? Your big sister got a lot of women's secrets deep down in here, and no one will know. Okay. They could not get it out of me. They tortured me, waterboarded me. I'm like, I'm not telling. If you need a sister, a big sister, you can trust that loves you, that wants the best for you, that's not hating on you and jealous of you. Hit me up. Send me an email. Six of goddess at yahoo.com. I got some spaces available this week. Get y'all sessions done. Okay. Sessions are 99 bucks. I don't over, you know, $500, $1,000, 99 bucks. That way I get me, you get you, and we good. Most girls only need one session, maybe two. We get a lot done in one session. 
Patreoners, non patreon will tell you, honey, I went to therapy for months, had one session with six, and my life made sense. Okay? We as sisters need each other. And your girl, your big sister, I just look this way. Okay? I've been through a lot. I get it. I'm here to help you. Book a session with me. Get my book. Read about my feminine journey. Okay? It's right here. Buy it. Go to sistergoddess.com and get it. Get you some alpha juice. Why are you sitting there without fresh fruits and vegetables in your body? Why have you not ordered alpha juice? Six God for five dollars off. What are you doing? Okay. Join the winning team here. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love you all, and I will see you on the next one.